بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Some very important details that we have to understand even ولو كريو تكفيريون even if the takfiris and those people who are hasty in their judgments of takfir and the people who want to revolt and rebel against the Muslim rulers but all of us are restrained for our thoughts you know our opinions and our actions by kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if we're believers in kuntum mu'minin in case you are a believer if you're a believer you're restrained by the nusus of the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the Prophet for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa atiu Allah wa atiu rasul wa awli al-amri minkum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to follow the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the pro- uh, uh, to order first and foremost to obey the commandments of Allah obey the messenger alayhi salatu wa salam and obey those in char- who are charged in authority over you one of the issues which we don't like to get into but in fact because there is so much confusion and so much fitna around this issue and so many people accuse people uh, make takfir or call uh, ahlus sunnah murjia or uh, make takfir of ahlus sunnah or call them mubtadi'in or call them wahhabis and all these other false alqab that it's imperative that we defend the haq based upon the haq but not based upon our desires not based upon defending ourselves not to based upon defending so and so or so and so group or jamaat but in in essence or in effort to defend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen against Ahl al-Bidah wal ahwa the people of Takfir, the Khawarij, the Neo-Takfiris, the Al-Qaeda, people like Bin Laden and those people who love Bin Laden and love the evil deeds that he was uh, instrumental in encouraging the people of Takfir and Tafjirat who blow up uh, and cause fitna in the lands of the Muslims. But let's get to the knowledge. Let's get to the knowledge-based things and take a look at this very important mas'ala. This is the issue an Imam uh, Muslim, he entitled this in his chapter in Sahih Muslim, he entitled it in the chapter which they translate usually to mean the disproval of seeking help from a disbeliever on military campaigns. And many of the takfiris, just to give us background about this issue, that they make takfir of great Imams of the Sunnah of this time, like Imam bin Baz and many of the ulama of Saudi, because they say, hey, bin Baz made a fatwa to allow the American troops to come to help defend the kingdom against the oppression and the onslaught of Saddam Hussein, who the ulama may take fear of. So why were American troops allowed to come here and have a base and etc etc? We're going to have to look at the nusus, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, looking at the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to answer these questions and to understand the fatwa. Because I don't think there's much explanation of this fatwa in English that I've come across in my years as a Muslim and in looking at this issue. But let's go to Sahih Muslim and see what Imam Nawawi, who we should all agree upon, even the takfiris about Imam Nawawi's fadl. And we should all agree about Imam Shafi'i and Imam uh, Abu Hanifa and Imam uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahimahumullah ta'ala jami'an. Let's look at this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. In this hadith, Collected in Sahih Muslim, so all of us should have access. An Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Zawj Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anha qalat, Kharaja Rasulullahi, Kharaja Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Kabla Bedrin, Falamma kana Bahratil Wabar, Adrakuhu Rajul, Kad kana Yathkuru minhu Juratun, Wan Najdatun, ففرها أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هين رآه فلما أدركه قال لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم جت لعتابك وأصيب معك قال له رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تؤمنون بالله ورسوله قال لا قال فرجع فلن استعين بمشرك
قالت ثم مضى حتى إذا كنا بشجرة أدركه الرجل فقال له كما قال أول مرة فقال له نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كما قال أول مرة قال فرجع فلا نستعين بمشرك قال ثم رجع فأدركه بالبيضاء فقال له كما قال أول مرة تؤمنون بالله ورسوله قال نعم فقال له رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فانطلق in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was entitled, you'll find it in chapter 50 in Sahih Muslim, and it is entitled "Disproval of Seeking uh, Help from a Disbeliever on Military Campaigns," and it has been narrated on the authority of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam set out for Badr. This was before the Battle of Badr. When he reached uh, Harat al-Wabara, which is a place which is four miles from Medina, a man met him who was known for his valor and courage. The companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een were pleased to see him. He said, I have come so that I may follow you and get a share from the war booty. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Do you believe in Allah and His Apostle? He said, No. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Go back, I will not seek help from a mushrik, meaning a polytheist. He went on until he reached uh, Shajara, where the man met him again. He asked him the same question, and the man gave him the same answer. He said, Go back, I uh, go, go back. I will not seek help from a mushrik. The man returned and overtook him at Bedr, at Beda, or came to him at Beda, and returned to him at Beda. He asked him as he had asked previously, do you believe in Allah and his apostle? The man said, yes. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, then come along with us. And this is in uh, Sahih Muslim. Now we need to go to the explanation and look at the other ahadith uh, pertaining to this very important issue. So that issue shows us that we should not seek um, uh, assistance from disbelievers in military campaigns. So that would seem to go with the evidence that those people who only know some of the evidence or, ha or base their knowledge based upon ignorance or base their knowledge upon their desires would seem to take. They will seem to take that that hadith and run with it. But let's see what other ahadith that are sound from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how Ahl Ilm, how the Salaf Salih, how they understood this in the source, how they understood these texts. So Imam Nawawi Rahimahullah Ta'ala says in relation to this, Qala Imam Nawawi, وَكَدْ جَاءَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ آخر. He said, and it, and it came in another hadith. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam أَسْتَعَانَ بِالصُّفْوَانِ ibn أُمَيَّةِ قَبْلَ إِسْلَامِهِ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sought refuge from a mushrik, sought assistance from a mushrik, who was Sufyan ibn Umayyah. And this was before he became a Muslim. How do the ulama understand this? فَأَخَذَ طَائِفَ مِنْ عُلَمَاء بِالْحَدِيثَ الْأَوْوُ عَلَىٰ إِطْلَاقِهِ وَقَالَ الشَّافِعِي وَآخِرُونَ إِنْ كَانَ الْكَافِرْ حُسْنُ الرَّعِي فِي الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَدَعَتُ الْحَاجَةَ إِلَى الْإِسْتِعَانَ بِهِ إِسْتَعِينَ بِهِ إِسْتَعِينَ بِهِ وَإِلَّا فَيُقْرَهِ So, a group of the ulama a major group, actually Jamhur of the ulama, most of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, they take Akhada Taifa min al ulama bil hadith al awu ala itlaqi. So a group, a, 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 a group from amongst the ulama, from the ulama of hadith, Ahl hadith, they take from the first hadith that it's permissible to. Uh, seek assistance from a, a polytheist or a, a disbeliever and they take it out of itlaq, meaning that they take it in general without exception, without any restrictions. So that means uh, there's no other conditions with that. They take it out of itlaq. وَقَالَ Imam Shafi'i وَآخِرُونَ Then Imam Shafi'i and another group of the ulama they said, "In kana al-kafir husnu rai fil muslimin wa da'at al-haja ila al-isti'ana bihi 
istainabi. So Imam Shafi and another group of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, they say that if a disbeliever has a good view about the Muslims, husn rai, a good opinion about the Muslims, and there is a necessity to seek uh, their assistance, then seek their assistance. But otherwise, if not, if there's no necessity, or they don't meet the other condition that they have a good opinion about the Muslims or what have you, or want good for the Muslims, or have benefit for the Muslims, then it is disliked. For yukre. وَحَمَلَ hadithain ala هَذَيْنْ halain. And so Imam Shafi and those scholars who hold that view, they use this those two hadith, they make a gem between those hadith relation to those two conditions, to those two situations. First that the disbeliever uh, that they don't you know, they have a, 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 a mission to destroy the Muslims or harm the Muslims, and also that there is a necessity to seek their assistance. وَقَالَ الزُّهْرِ وَالْعُوزَاعِ يَسْهَمْ لَهُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ So then Imam al-Nawawi related that. He said, and if uh, a disbeliever is with the uh, Muslims in the battle, meeting those two conditions, of course, then they must... Uh, you know, allow them something from the ghanima, but it is not fixed. Meaning that they can actually receive a portion of the war booty um, as long as it is not a fixed portion which is determined by the imam. Now let's see, is this my opinion? Is this uh, Bin Baz's opinion? Is this Rahimahullah Ta'ala, is this Bin Uthaymeen and those ulama who that the takfiris attack, is this their, their opinion? Yes, but whose opinion was it first? This is the view of this Wahhab and Madhab. This is the Nas of Imam, uh, Imam Noah, he's saying this. Have a Madhab, a Malik. This is the Madhab of Imam Malik. Wa Shafi'i. Wa Imam Shafi'i. Wa Abi Hanifa. Wa Imam Abi Hanifa. Wa Jamhur, meaning the majority of the scholars. Wa Qala Zuhri. Wa Awza'i. These are also from the Salaf. That uh, there is that there's a, a portion for the a portion of the Ghanima for the Mushrik, and Allah knows best. So that gives us a background of why Imam bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala made his fatwa because he felt it was a necessity. He felt it was a necessity that the kingdom be protected, the, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia be protected from the onslaught of uh, Saddam Hussein and uh, his troops as they would wreak havoc upon the land of the Haramain. So that great Imam made his ijtihad, his fatwa, based on nusus from Kitabillah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as we know, for our benefit, that most ahkam and fiqh, most fiqh masail, mabni ala dhan, are, are dhanni. Meaning that they are not, a lot of the issues in fiqh, and this is why you have so, many, so much ikhtilaf in many issues of fiqh, not in aqidah with Ahl Sunnah, but in Masail of fiqh, that it depends on how those Imams understood the Nusus and how they used and, and understood the language and many other factors which cause them to have differences in jurisprudent rulings in fatawa and so forth. Another benefit I want to mention which relates to usul of fiqh, that, and this is directly related to this uh, evidence that we discuss, because here we have two ahadith that are sahih from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that on the vahir, to according to many of us and according to a lot of people who are either weak in iman or maybe weak in their understanding, that they will think that these two um, 
situations that they have ta'arud, that they have contradiction. What do the scholars of fiqh and the usuliyun or the usuliyin, what do they do when two nasus appear to contradict each other on the vahir? The madhab of the jamhur of the ulama is this, it goes as follows. There are four uh, ahkam if you want it so to speak. That if you have two sound hadith, for example, that issue we just talked about, one hadith the Prophet ﷺ sought uh, support from a disbeliever. In the other hadith, he said, do not seek support of a disbeliever. How do we then look at that nasus? In many other ahadith, for example, Masa dhakr is another issue in which the Prophet ﷺ in one hadith, which is sound, he said that the that the uh, private part of the male akramakum Allah is a part of his body, so that if you touch your private part, it doesn't break your wudu. In another hadith narration, the Prophet wasallam said that masa dhakr yankudu wudu that uh, touching the private part it breaks your wudu. So how do we look at those nasus? The imams of Ahl Sunnah, the, uh, the Usuliyin, those uh, scholars of Usul, Usul of Fiqh, if Nusus have uh, appeared to contradict, then the first thing they try to do with the Nusus, and these are sound, we're looking at, we're talking about sound evidences, two sound evidences, maybe one explains the other. How do we look at those Nusus? The first thing they do is a gem. The first thing they do is they try to uh, combine those nasus and try to make tawfiq between those two uh, nasus. So for example, if one is prohibiting an action and the other one is allowing an action, then the first thing that the, the jamhur of the ulama, the jamhur of the scholars of jurisprudence is they try to make uh, agreement between those hadith. If there is no way to make agreeance, so the first thing they do is make it agreeance. If there's no way to make agreeance with those nasus, that for, for whatever reasons the ta'arud is very strong and there's no way to make agreeance, then there's nasakh. Then the second thing they do is they, uh, one is they look to see how one may abrogate the other hadith. If there is no way that the, if they don't one does not uh, make nasakh of the other one. There's no evidence that one uh, abrogates the other. Then the third thing they move to is tarjih. And tarjih is that they look for the one that appears to be the stronger in evidence according to their view. And according to their view, and looking at the nasus, at both of those evidences and other evidences in the Quran and the Sunnah, they look to see which one seems to be stronger than the other one. Which one is rajah? Which evidence is more, is stronger? In, in, in according to uh, their their view, which one is most uh, stronger in evidence. If they're unable to determine that, then the fourth level that they move to is tawakkaf, meaning that if they have two hadith and they they don't uh, they appear to contract contradict one another on the vahir and they can't do those other steps, they can't make a, a com combining of those two evidences, or they can't, one doesn't abrogate the other, or one, they can't determine, it, 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 nothing appears to them to be stronger than the other, then they make tawakif, meaning they stop there. This is what it's upon us to do, in the, and that is the way the fuqaha, they look at the evidences, meaning they don't make a judgment, they leave it. They say, Allah, Allahu alam between those two nusus. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and bless this to be a light and an understanding for us in these very complex issues. In fact, issues that are complex enough that we don't really need to engage in them. But unfortunately, since so many uh, Muslims that don't know their religion busy themselves with takfir and busy themselves with talking about the leaders and busy themselves with doing many things in Islam which they have no knowledge about or little knowledge about or they've made taqlid of an imam who is uh, a, pe a person of ahl bid'a wal ahwa or a person of desires, a person who is deviant, then it makes it, it becomes a necessity for us at some times to look at those issues. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.